we know that nothing's perfect, right? We're going to have adverse events. There's going to be people who are going to have an allergic reaction to the vaccine or its components. That's going to happen. There's going to be people that are going to have a rare adverse event. Imagine somebody somewhere takes this thing and then they have this weird blood disorder that happens because of it. There are billions of people in the world and stuff can get weird, right? Stuff's going to happen. But when it comes to this, the benefits far outweigh the risks, right? Go back to that initial conversation that I said, that virus, what's the risk of catching that virus? What's the risk of you having some sort of horrible long-term problem from this? Even if you have a mild case, it's high, very high. So, and the risk of these things, adverse events are so very low. So we have to grow up. You guys know that I talk kind of straight with everything, right? We can't expect things to be perfect. Nothing is. The seatbelts in your car, the medicines or supplements that you take, the surgery that you need, the exercise you do, right? I'd like to sit on the couch because I know I won't get hurt. Um, you, your diet, the coffee you drink, all of that stuff poses a risk. You could drown in your soup. There's an inherent risk. So the risk of the problems here are very low and the benefit is tremendous to you and the public at large. So it's not Russian roulette because that's really the picture that people have. Oh, there's a risk. And so there's a chance that I'll get it. So it's Russian roulette instead of one out of six. It's like the, the canisters, like a billion or let's even say a hundred thousand out of out of one, right? So that you'd have to spin this big old thing. And yeah, potentially something bad could happen, but it's well, well worth that risk. So here's what really can happen. Pain, redness, or slight swelling in the arm at the injection site. Headache, fever, chills, fatigue. This starts within 24 hours and usually persists no longer than 72 hours. And based on what I'm hearing, this vaccine, much like the Shingrix vaccine or the Pneumovax, because I don't want you to think it's rare, it's pretty common, those vaccines also cause these reactions to a stronger degree than like flu shots, for example, right? So you're more likely to have any one of those things and it's gonna be pronounced, right? So let me give you some anecdotes. If you follow me on social media, which is Dr. Neil Smoller on Facebook and Instagram, we qualified for 1A and we were vaccinated on January 6th, just yesterday. And here's what happened. Four of us had muscle pain at the injection site. Two of those folks, me included, had it pretty bad. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not a big wussy. I, I pump iron. I can't lift my arm past this without it hurting really bad. Okay. So that stinks. And I needed pain relievers. So I took Advil last night and this morning, I'm probably going to get a dose before I go to bed. One person had chills and achiness within hours, right? And she had a tough time sleeping. And then she was up here this morning and uh, she felt kind of crappy again. So she just had to take it easy. But two of the people had absolutely no reaction at all. 